Hello, we are here in Thousand Oak, California, and I'm here with Sean MacArthur. MacArthur. Nice to meet you, Sean. You I'm Sean well. from ByBV, and I want to know what you do, and I want to know your experience as a EV driver. Okay. Yeah, Please absolutely. Go on. Yeah, so I'm, I work for Community Environmental Council. It's mm -hmm. a local nonprofit. We serve uh, the Tri County area mm -hmm. in the Central Coast. So that's uh, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, mm -hmm. and Ventura counties. Mm -hmm. uh, I help people uh, purchase electric vehicles. Uh, it's one of the projects that I manage. And uh, we take people through the whole process from beginning to end, help them figure out what incentive programs they qualify for, help them with dealerships, applying for grants and other incentives, mm -hmm. um, and just answer any questions that they have. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of barriers to accessing electric vehicles, um, like language access is a major one. So we help uh, people in two different languages, English and Spanish. Oh, wow. uh, and it's a free service, uh -huh. so we don't charge anything. Um, we're funded by government grants, so we're able to okay. uh, help people through that process for mm -hmm. free. Um, we also help uh, with EV charger installations. So we have um, a lot of outreach that we do where we uh, work with uh, local companies so, and governments, nonprofits to help them install EV chargers at their workplaces and homes. Okay. Um, what do you think, like, what do you think people's, like, I guess, motivation to change from uh, traditional gas, uh, gas automobiles to EV? Well, and then, like, as you said, you are an EV owner yourself. Yeah. What, like, what got you into EV? And when you talk to those people, like, what made them ch want to change into um, EVs? Yeah, well, I think one of the main motivations is um, cost savings. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to own an EV um, in the long run. The overall price actually ends up being lower okay. uh, just because of the cost of fuel and the cost of maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to, it's 100 times fewer moving parts in electric vehicles than internal combustion at engines on average. Mm -hmm. um, so it's significantly cheaper since there's a lot less to go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, the fuel cost is about a third to a quarter of the cost. Mm -hmm. um, Myself, I have a significantly lower fuel cost uh, monthly. Uh, I used to drive a vehicle that took premium gas, so now it's about a quarter of the price for me, which is fantastic. Uh, I think a lot of people also want to reap the environmental benefits. Uh, it doesn't have any direct emissions. And if you live in a city that has a high mix of renewable energy, then you're end ending up uh, driving uh, without really having any of those environmental impacts. Uh, for myself, I, I don't have a charger at my, my home, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I'm, I'm a renter, as most people in California are, uh, unfortunately. So <laughs> I don't have a charger. Okay. okay. Uh, but mm -hmm. the investment in public charging has been significant on the Central Coast. So I don't have to worry too much about uh, waiting in line for charging. Okay. I've only had to wait twice in the last six months mm -hmm. for a charger. Mm -hmm. uh, and the cost is low. Um, the city of Santa Barbara that I live in, um, they've installed a ton of charging and they've um, kept the price low. Um, we have off-peak times during the middle of the day because we have a high mix of renewable energy. And the place I charge actually has solar panels. So I'm essentially driving on sunshine, which feels really good. I see, I see. So, um, well, because when I actually look at some of the reviews on the charging stations, yeah, a lot of them don't really have a good reviews as all oh, the chargers are down or yeah, they just yeah. have to wait a lot I hear you so but from your experience you never had that kind of problem I have had a couple stations that have been down when I've showed up uh -huh. um, in Ventura for example um, they haven't fixed the chargers because they're redoing a whole lot okay so I went to this uh, like the Ventura Harbor chargers don't work so I was like hi um, but I don't run into it as much as people think I tend to avoid them also I went with the Tesla uh, because the infrastructure is really good oh, right. it's really well built out and they have an incentive to uh, keep them operating uh -huh. because they want people to have a good experience yeah um, it does happen though um, especially with other brands that are non Tesla branded um, Electrify America um, is a good example of high investment that didn't end up getting a ton of maintenance mm -hmm. which is a little unfortunate uh, but private investment is a really great way to ensure that 
there we're getting a lot of uh, maintenance done because mm -hmm. if a private company owns it they're going to be incentivized to make sure it's maintained uh -huh. so especially with the uh, dc fast chargers i think that's a huge one um, if the convenience is a major factor for a lot of people mm -hmm. if you're stopping like along the highway and um, the chargers aren't working you're kind of screwed yeah so have you actually gone on a like long road trip with your ev i have i drove from santa barbara all the way to uh, Yosemite, which is about 500 miles. Oh wow! Uh, both ways. Uh -huh. I went and picked up my grandpa in Sacramento, and then we drove over. And uh -huh. I had to char stop to charge uh, about three or four times okay. the whole way, uh -huh. um, which you know wasn't a big deal. You don't have to charge the whole way. I just charge enough to get to the next station, and yeah, um, it was pretty seamless. The, oh really? Uh, the Tesla. At, or the Tesla screen will mm -hmm. tell you where you need to charge. So you put your start location and your end location and it'll tell you where to stop along the way. So oh. it's really not that big of a deal. I see. I see. Yeah. That's because um, I'm actually planning on a trip to go to Florida from Dallas. Okay. And well, the uh, infrastructure, the charging infrastructure is not as well established in the southern area yet. yeah 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 so i just wanted to know about your experience in california yeah. it's, it's big on EVs, so. yeah you can map it out too mm -hmm. and like i have uh, i have a friend who's from michigan and uh just for fun i put his home address uh -huh. which is in Oakmouth, michigan in the middle of nowhere uh -huh. and uh it had us stop about 15 times, 15 to 20 times along the way, but there were enough chargers to, to get there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about you know the south from you know, Texas, but um, you could plan it out ahead of time and see if it would be a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, and it really depends on the type of vehicle that you have to. So Tesla, the good, good thing about Tesla, which you know I, I talk about Tesla a lot because it's my experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. the end all yeah. be all, but. Right. They're opening their charger uh, network to a lot of other companies like mm -hmm. Ford and Kia and other brands are starting to get access, which is really great. So, yeah. so um, as a EV enthusiast, yeah, do you want to talk about some misconceptions that people have with how you know how uh, EVs or oh, they can like catch on fire? Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and talk yeah. about it. Yeah, a lot of people have that misconception because they see something on the news of like uh, some EV on fire, mm -hmm. uh, and it does happen. It's it's any fuel source mm -hmm. uh, is combustible. Right. You have to have uh, it comes from energy, right? Mm -hmm. You know the electrons in there they can catch on fire. It mm -hmm. happens from chain reactions, whatever. Uh, it doesn't happen frequently. It's it's actually about three to four times less likely to happen with a electric vehicle than a internal combustion engine. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's that's a funny misconception, mm -hmm. and I think it just comes from uh, people who don't really like EVs. They push this narrative. Oh, yeah. um, right. Oil companies, big one. Uh -huh. uh, they don't want you know EVs to gain traction. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's one of the major ones. Um, I think people think sometimes that they're not powerful because they don't make sound. Everybody's like, oh, it doesn't make all this like loud sound, which is funny. But it's actually, actually significantly faster. Right, they have right. way more torque. Right. Um, so that's that's a, that's a big uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are some other misconceptions? So you said something about like oil company. They're like pushing the narratives mm -hmm. of yeah. um, how you can catch fire and they <laughs> spread those news. But yeah. I don't know why they cannot think about like working together because uh, we are actually talking with a bunch of like gas station owners yeah. to put some EV chargers you know, as an add-on service yeah so and then like companies like Shell, mm -hmm. BP, mm -hmm. they actually are looking into coming to the EV market and they yeah. are already doing so Right. Yeah. No, I'm just well, I think one you, of the things that the just car industry in general is starting to realize is that it's the future. EVs are the future. I mean, if you look around, we got Hyundai, we have a Audi and a Kia. Um, <laughs> we have a Genesis. Yeah. We have Tesla. We we have a lot of vehicles represented. Right. We went to the LA Auto Show last uh, November. Mm -hmm. Every vehicle that I saw that was debuting were EVs. Kia was a great example. They had three EVs that they debuted last year. Um, 
it's such a high end investment. Mm -hmm. They didn't they didn't uh, debut any gas cars. Oh. Yeah, so you're really starting to see a higher investment, which is really great to see. People are starting to realize that the money's there and the, the interest is there. Um, we're past kind of an early um, early adopter uh, market. We're kind of in an early majority, so we're starting to see more investment. When you start seeing more investment, people start to really pick it up and the mainstream uh, industry starts to pick it up, which is really exciting to see. And it's great to see you know, more of the gas stations. That's, that's really what we need. Yeah. Uh, we need, we could have them on every corner. Mm -hmm. It'd be fantastic. Um, and then you just need to have more investment in the grid, uh, which once you get more people driving EVs, mm -hmm. there's going to be higher demand right. for the charging, right. and the utility companies will follow suit and increase the uh, the capacity on the grid. So it kind of all is a domino effect. You start getting high investment, and then you start to get the industry take it to really take it on. Okay. Well, thank you for your insights in EV. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Sean. Bye.